The market's softening. This is a better market to be a buyer in compared to, well, this time last year, and much better than when compared to 2022. The question becomes, will it continue and by how much? And it's not just the single family market. The actual condo market is just flashing some signs of a strong possibility of no longer being a seller's market. We're gonna talk about all of this shortly, so stay tuned. And people are starting to talk about what we've been saying for, well, at this point, quite some time. History may be about to repeat itself. Get ready for the misery of the 1970s all over again. In this video, we're gonna go over the single family condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also gonna do a quick interest rate update, and we're gonna talk about some relevant current events. Hi. I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then note I'm here to help. Two quick highlights. We buy houses all over Massachusetts cash and as is conditioned, you can visit cashofferma.com for more information. If you're interested, thinking of selling your house, wanting to save possibly tens of thousands of dollars, we now have an economy program that will actually sell your house for 1%. Let's jump into the single family condo stats. Look at that jump in inventory levels. There were 3,730 single family houses on the market in the state of Massachusetts. And we now have 29% more houses on the market today than we did just 28 days ago. Now I told you that more inventory, it was coming and there's actually gonna be a lot more. So stay tuned and if you're poll buyers, get ready and get excited because the inventory gap continues to widen. I think we're going to continue to see it widening as we go through the spring market. Now, I believe there are going to be, well, some great opportunities for home buyers in the coming months. So again, this is just great news if you're a home buyer, because we now have 368 more houses on the market today when compared to the same time last year, and 482 more houses on the market today than compared back in 2022. While I believe that the inventory gap levels will widen when compared to 2023, they're actually going to begin to tighten when compared to 2022. And here's why. Interest rates were just starting their march up higher right about now in 2022. People were starting to front load their real estate transactions. In other words, people moved up the moving timeline so they could take advantage of the low rates. And this is what's going to create some confusion when compared to today's data to 2022s. Now, the question becomes, will our inventory levels continue to grow and be higher than the levels in 2022? And at this point, I'm thinking they will. Another strong week for new listings. This week, we listed 1,212 single family homes in the state of Massachusetts. This is six units or half percent higher than the same week back in 2023. So for all intents and purposes, New listing activity was pretty much even with last year. Now that four week rolling average came in at 959 units. Under agreements, they were strong, but were a little below last year's levels. This week we put 976 houses under agreement. Now this week that puts us at 27 units or 2.7% fewer homes under agreements than the same week last year when we put 1,003 single family houses under agreement. Now that four week rolling average, that's 904 units. So when compared to last year's market, new listings, they were up by half percent while under agreements were down by 2.7%. And now onto that new data metric, the one that I just started rolling out last week, the pendings to new listings ratio. Now we had 976 units that went under agreement this week. And this is compared to the 1,046 new listings that came on the market two weeks ago. This means our pendings to new listings ratio was 93.3% this week. Now this is compared to 95.9% last week. The average for the last four weeks is 99.5%. And this is compared to weeks five through eight, where it was 93.6%. So what are we looking for here? We're looking for the start of a trend where we're actually selling less homes than are coming on the market. And I believe that this is the first alarm bell of the softening market when we see that. There were 595 single family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $811,000 and a median sales price of $640,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were down by 31.8% as there were 873 single family homes that sold this week last year for an average sales price of $785,000. And that's four out of the last five weeks 
where the average sales price has been in the $800,000 plus range. Big numbers. Now, months of inventory. This is how we determine what type of market that we're in. Zero to five months, that's considered a seller's market. But the closer that you get to zero, the stronger and more aggressive of a seller's market that it is. This week, months of inventory is up to 2.09 months from last week's 1.95 months. Now, the 2.09 months this week is compared to the 1.89 months this week last year. This is the highest I have ever seen it recorded since I actually started keeping track of the data back in the beginning of 2022. Like I said, the market is showing signs of softening. The question is, will it continue? Real quick, it's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now, onto the condo market. We have 2,450 condos on the market as of Monday. The gains, they continue to not be huge, but they continue to be consistent. This is 20.3% more inventory on the market today than just 28 days ago. And we took a jump towards the 2021 inventory levels this week. We now have 295 more units on the market today than today last year. Meanwhile, we have 412 more units when compared to the inventory levels back in 2022. And we are now only 80 units short of 2021's inventory levels. Now, last week, I had made a prediction that we would catch up to the inventory levels of 2021 sometime in May of this year. And I'm really feeling good about that prediction right now, seeing what just happened this week. There were 551 condos that came on the market last week with that four-week rolling average of 503 units. Now, the 551 units listed was 42 units, or 8.3% more than the 509 condos that came on the market this week back in 2023. And I think this is where it's really showing the signs of weaknesses in the condo market and what's actually contributing to that inventory growth. Because this week, we put 454 units under agreement. Now, this 454 condo sales was 62 units or 12% less than last year. When we put 516 condos under agreement. That four-week rolling average, well, that came in at 418 units. So 8.3% more listings that came on the market when compared to this week last year while selling 12% fewer condos. The condo pendings to new listing ratio was 87.8% this week. This is up from 85% last week, so there's some good news there. But the average for the last four weeks is 87%, which is compared to 87.3% for weeks five through eight. So this is pretty steady, but a 13% difference over two months really explains the inventory growth that we've been seeing in the condo market. There were 284 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $739,000 and a median sales price of $540,000. And this same week last year, there were 417 condos that sold. And so that means that sales levels were down by about 31.9%. But keep in mind that we don't have the full month end data here, which is why we're seeing such a big difference between those sales levels. Months of inventory, that actually jumped to 2.91 months from last week's 2.86 months. This is compared to the months of inventory levels of 2.44 months this week last year. Now, it's different week, don't get me wrong, but the same story as, again, the highest level for months of inventory that I have seen since I started keeping data back in the beginning of 2022. The condo market, it continues to weaken. That's your proof right there, the months of inventory. Do I see us hitting the all-important five-month threshold where it's the beginning of a true balanced market where neither buyer nor seller has pricing power in 2024? No, I don't, but buyers are starting to gain some advantage here. Be happy if you're a condo home buyer buying right around now. And it's just, you can do me a huge favor. Can you hit that like button right down there? Believe it or not, it just makes a huge difference for me and the channels. It just plays with that YouTube algorithm. And while subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. So if you haven't subscribed, I truly appreciate you considering subscribing if you're liking the content, that is. Time to talk about interest rates. Make that two weeks of stable interest rates. Now, the advantage that the buyers are seeing in the market with increased inventory is actually being negated with the higher interest rates. Darn. Let's be optimistic for a second. Rates could be worse. We're still significantly below the 52-week high. And I've been saying this for, at this point, I think I can say years. Inflation is not easy to stop out of an economy. I wasn't a genius for being able to say this, 
I just looked at the similarities of our situation today and then compared them to our history lessons back in the 1970s. In 1973, the inflation rate was 6.18% and 11.05% in 1974. Then it started to dip in 1975 to 9.74%. And even more in 1976 at 5.74%. In 1977, it jumped to 6.5%, then 7.62%. In 1978, 11.25%. In 1979 and 13.55% in 1980, people were celebrating the decreases in inflation in 1976, just like now. But then in the late 70s, we got what was called stagflation. The so-called experts said stagflation, it was impossible. So what is stagflation? Stagflation is an economic condition characterized by a combination of stagnant economic growth, high unemployment, and high inflation. We had two out of the three right now, stagnant economic growth and inflation that well is growing the only thing we're missing is high unemployment but well the letting off news it's been coming in hot recently unfortunately full-time job positions are actually down while it's actually part-time job growth that is making the economic numbers kind of look good kind of now the article says some wall street strategists are growing concerned that the U.S. economy could be headed toward a 1970s style stagflation scenario aiming recent signs of stubbornly high inflation and a cooling economy. They also note that inflation reports for the first three months of 2024 all came in above estimates and that economic growth in the first quarter was 1.6%, which was the lowest amount since 2022. That was not a great number right there. The article quotes, the biggest setback is the acceleration in core inflation, and in particular, the service sector rising above a 5% annual rate. It was stagflation that gave us 20% interest rates. Yes, you heard that right. Interest rates in the early 1980s were close to 20%. Jamie Dimon, the CEO of JP Morgan Chase, who isn't a guy that I exactly love, he said that he thinks there's a chance that can happen again, stagflation that is. He says he worries it looks more like the 70s than he, we've ever seen before. Fun fact, home prices actually went up in the 1970s, even with the high interest rates. I did this video a little over a year ago. It's worth a watch now more than ever. When you talk about your own personal real estate needs, again, it's Jeff Chubb. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone that's thinking about buying or selling a house, then I truly appreciate you passing along my contact information. You can visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com or you can find all of our contact information in the description below right down there. Until next time.